We worship this morning according to the order of morning praise on page 45 in the front of the hymnal. O Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. Praise be to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us worship him. congregation is invited to join in singing Psalm 67 on page 91 in the front of the hymnal. Psalm 67 on page 91. The congregation may be seated for the singing of the psalm. Testament lesson for our Harvest Mission Festival is from Isaiah chapter 6 beginning at verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne high and exalted. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. 
With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard a voice, the voice of the Lord, saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. So far the Old Testament lesson. And our epistle lesson for today from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, beginning at verse 16. Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge and so not make use of my rights in preaching. Though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak I became weak to win the weak. I become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is written in the 28th chapter according to St. Matthew and begins at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Here ends the Holy Gospel.
give us a lesson from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, where Paul says, I have become all things to all men, so that by all possible means I might win some. I do this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. <laughs> Thank you. 
that Paul had the answer. And the answer is Christ crucified. You see, the full message of God's good news, the gospel, is not, not, God loves you and will forgive you. The full message of God's gospel is God loves you enough that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross to suffer the punishment for your sins and mine, so that them our sins could be forgiven. That, the message of God's full law and the full message of his gospel was what changed those Christians in Corinth. Despite the fact that in our country today, the polls can be trusted. 75% of the American people and over 50% of Christians believe that even if people don't believe in Jesus Christ, they will somehow, in some way, eventually get to heaven. Yet God's word says something very, very different. It says, without Jesus Christ, Christ crucified, there is no salvation. No governmental administration, be it Republican or Democrat, no great laws that are passed can change that. The only thing that can change that is what changes people's hearts and has always changed people's hearts. The full message of God's law now, Paul was arguably the best missionary that there ever has been. Spending his life going all over the world for the message of God's full law and God's full gospel. Why do you think he was such a good missionary? It was because he never lost the sight of who he was what he had done. Remember what Paul was before he became a Christian? He was a persecutor of the Christian church. He put Christians, yes, even boys and girls, in jail. Maybe he even had some of them killed. When he woke up in the morning and when he looked at himself in the mirror, he saw a sinner, a persecutor of Jesus Christ. And that's why time and again in his Epistles, he talks himself, about himself as being less than the least of God's people, the worst of sinners. But Paul not only never could forget what he was and what he had done, he also couldn't forget what God had done for him. And what God had done for him went beyond sending his son Jesus to die on the cross to be his Savior. The Lord had plucked him up and said, I want you to be somebody to proclaim that message to others. What a gracious privilege that he had. And that is why he says in our text, I am compelled to preach. Remembering what he was and what he had done, remembering what God had done for him, it compelled him. He goes on to say, woe to me if I do not preach. Woe means I'm cursed. And why would it be a curse if he didn't preach? Because it would be a sign that he was starting to forget about who he was. Back in 1973 at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary, a short time before Pastor Hefty and I went there, a young African pastor from Nigeria, David Eshiot, came to study for a year at the seminary. He kind of stuck out in Mequon. Mequon, if you don't know it, when our seminary started was a farming community. Now it's one of the affluent suburbs of Milwaukee. He stuck out because he was about the only man with dark colored skin around. When he would go into a store, people would ask him, where are you from? And, well, obviously from his voice, they would tell he wasn't an American or an African American, that he was from somewhere else. He would say he was from Nigeria. And then he would always come 
back to the person and say, Mike, do you mind if I ask you, do you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior? And one day, President Lawrence of our seminary got a call from a concerned Wells member in Mequon because the rumors about what this guy was doing was going all around Mequon. And she phoned up President Lawrence and said, President Lawrence, I am concerned that one of your students is going out and asking people if they believe that Jesus is their Savior. President Lawrence, in his inimitable style, said, I'm not concerned that one of our students is doing that. I'm concerned that all of them are.
Let us continue on the top of page 50 in the front of the hymnal. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you, be merciful to me, and hear my prayer. Let us offer up our prayers today for Mark Reggett, who is hospitalized at Gunderson Lutheran. O oh Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servant and restore his strength. You gave your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servant and bless the medical means employed on his behalf with your healing power. We commit him to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God for Jesus' sake. Amen. Let us also offer up a prayer of thanks for the 25th wedding anniversary of Brad and Sue Gulnick. We pray, Lord Jesus, your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the grace by which you have sustained your servants throughout 25 years of their married life. We ask that you continue to fill their hearts with the unselfish love that reflects your sacrificial love for them so that their love for each other may never grow weary. With every joy and sorrow that they share, Bring them closer to each other and to you, their God and Lord. Encourage all husbands and wives as they seek to fulfill their marriage promises. And bless all our homes with your abiding peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And we also pray, merciful Father, your kindness caused the light of the gospel to shine among us. Use us now as instruments of your love to reach out with the message of salvation to all people. Bless those who labor in the mission fields of our nation and also in faraway places and grant success to their witness that many may be freed from sin through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen
Let us continue on the bottom of page 50 in the front of the hymnal. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power. And grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Let us praise the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please read each other. 